I actually think that this is some of the best makeup that I've ever put on my face. So the topic of underpainting has been all the rage on the internet right now, really spearheaded by Mary Phillips, who is a fabulous celebrity makeup artist. And I've really been wanting to try it, but I've also been a little bit skeptical because sometimes I'm like, how different could it really be? But I did want to dedicate a video to trying the technique because I do think that it looks magical and Mary Phillips herself uses it on so many different celebrities faces that she does. And I actually hadn't been like, so tickled to do it until I saw Melissa Herkman, who is another makeup artist who I know and love. She's based in LA, she's amazing. I've had the pleasure of having her touch my face as well. She actually posted a video of underpainting, her take on underpainting on her Instagram, and I gasped. I messaged her, I was like, oh my God, Melissa, can you send me this video? I want to be able to watch it in slow-mo and recreate this because I felt like she really broke it down in such a digestible way. I love the product she used, the model that was obviously stunning, who she did it on. And so that's what I wanted to do today. I wanted to do the Melissa Herkman take on the underpainting because I felt like she made it very doable for us um, willing consumers. So here we go, guys. I've got a naked face on. I did my brows in preparation. And let us do some underpainting. Melissa Herkman, we love you and thank you for your service. <laughs> I'm gonna be scrolling through this video as we go so that I don't miss a step, okay? We're gonna do our best to emulate Melissa's mind here. Uh, so she starts with skin prep. As all fabulous makeup artists do, they always focus on the skin. I'm gonna do a nice thick and juicy base of the Emberlease cream. And I'm gonna rub that in. And Melissa talks about doing a face massage and really prepping the skin. Whenever I'm doing my own makeup, I just kind of skirt skirt past the face massage, but we can just try to do an extra deep little rub. <laughs> So I'm sure we've all seen what the definition of underpainting actually is at this point, but basically it's just doing everything underneath the foundation. You're doing all your sculpting, your bronzing, your warming of the skin underneath the foundation and the foundation goes on over top as a nice layer. I think that helps in an effort to use less foundation. You're really only covering what you need. I always find it a little bit interesting because whenever I see this done, like the person's face is always perfect and blemish free. So I'm very interested to see uh, what would be done if someone had like active red breakouts, you know, because obviously if you don't have any zits to cover, you can do this without worrying about it. But where does the concealer point come in in the underpainting world? You know what I mean? Anyway, so basically from here, we go in and contour. We're gonna sculpt and warm up the face. Now, Melissa in the video used these lovely little freck Face Hacks Precision Sculpting Bronzers. And I did pick them up. They're so cute. Look at the packaging. Very, very tiny, very handy for travel. I love the idea of them. However, I do think that uh, the model had a much deeper skin tone than I do, and she was able to use the darker one. I picked up medium and medium tan, and I don't know if we're gonna get the effect that we're looking for with these. So I kind of thought, you know what? Those are cute. They look promising, but for what we're doing today, I actually thought that the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wands, the contour ones, the two shades are like perfect for what we need to do today. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these. Obviously you can use whatever other products you want. There's also the Hindash Sculpting. The e.l.f. Putty Bronzers are perfect. The Nude Sticks Nudies Bronzers are perfect. Also like the Makeup Forever Palette. Perfect palette for doing this. You essentially just need a lighter shade and a deeper shade to do bronzing and sculpting on your face. And this is actually really nice and small and thin for applying too, so we can be very precise. So she starts with a deeper shade and sculpts out the cheek. And another shade that's darker to really sculpt. I okay, so it's actually quite a thick line. So I'm just gonna like kind of wiggle this around. Oh my God, Melissa, if you're watching, please don't judge me. Or you can judge and then come help me do it right. <laughs> okay, so just one nice thick line. And I, I actually couldn't tell. I think she did take the, the deeper one and put it along the jawline. And that was it. That was it for the deeper one. This looks amazing. Then we're gonna go in with the lighter shade and go on top of that. So she kind of blended it in on top of the deeper lines. Taking that on the forehead. Just a little bit near the temples too. And then down the nose. And she actually did this with a really thin line. I'm gonna see if I can do this properly, even though my little knobbly nose always makes this a little bit difficult. But whenever I see a makeup artist do this, I'm like, why is everyone's nose so straight? It doesn't look the same on me. <laughs> and then she went around kind of like chiseling out the little ball of the nose here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this around my lips too. Cause I always love when people do that. I think the effect is very nice. Have you guys tried that yet? Putting your contour around your lips? It actually has a really nice effect when the makeup is done. If you remember to blend it out, 
that is the key. So I've got my little duo sided It Cosmetics brush here and I'm just gonna use that to blend this out. So basically she goes in and blends all of this together. She, it looks like she's using the Patrick Ta sculpting brush, which is actually probably a pretty fabulous option for this. I do not have that. So we're using what we have. I'm gonna kind of flip between my normal sculpting brush and then this fluffier one from It Cosmetics in an effort to blend this out. So it just looks like she really softly blends this into the skin. I'm really lightly just pushing this around the skin, blending it into my hairline. This is looking hilarious. This reminds me of like 2016 contouring on YouTube. <laughs> Except we didn't put the foundation on top. We put the foundation under and this sat on top. Oh boy. I feel like this is where you really have to exercise patience because this can take some time but uh, we're gonna try to be patient with it. And I'm just going over top with that fluffy brush and doing this using a clean brush, kind of like the Nikki makeup way. This helps to blend it in even more. <laughs> it always feels so funny to see your face like this, but also very chiseled, very chiseled. Okay, now we're gonna go in with the brightening step. And she used the Rodeal Banana Bright Brightener, I believe. Um, I actually have the little Ola Henriksen Banana Concealer, which I thought would be fun, but if not, I also have all of my shades of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which I think could give a similar effect. But basically, you just want to use something that is lighter than your skin here and we want to brighten. I'm using a little Refer 33 brush, which I think is gonna be the perfect brush for this, but I wanna get this little corrector in here because my eyes are so purple, so blue, so dark, and I definitely need a little bit of brightening help. If this isn't bright enough, I'll switch into the lighter shade. You know what, I think I can actually just go ahead and just apply this right onto the skin. Yeah, this might be a little bit too yellow for what we're looking for, but I do just wanna put this in there. So using that, and then I'm gonna use the NARS Vanilla Radiant Creamy Concealer. I'm gonna apply this onto the back of my hand just to ensure that we don't use too much product. She's actually using like a really, really teeny, teeny, tiny little brush. And puts a little bit on the chin. Taking a little bit on the outer portion of the under eye here and using that to kind of lift a little bit. So then I'm gonna take a tiny little brush in the same brightening shade and draw the straightest line that I could possibly muster down the nose. Like that. And she doesn't actually blend this in for a little while, so we're gonna let this sit. I've got a really big zit right here, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of extra concealer there to be blended out later, hee <laughs> hee. And then for now, I'm just gonna leave this line there. And the key thing is gonna be keeping your brushes on hand because throughout the process, it looks like she jumps between. She kind of like goes here and blends this into the bronzer and then we'll go back in with the bronzer brush and blend that around. It's just like a constant, constant ebb and flow of the brushes and blending it in. So just keep these on hand if you ever want to push more product in. But next we're gonna move on to foundation. So she actually used two different shades of foundation and she used the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I've got this in the shade 4.5 and 5 and 4.5 is actually darker than five. I'm gonna take a pump of each on the back of my hand, but she starts with the deeper shade and puts that on the outside areas of the face where we applied the warm bronzer. It looks like she's using a pretty fluffy brush for this, so I'm gonna take my little Real Techniques, I don't know what this, oh, setting brush, because it's a fluffy duo fiber brush. I feel like this will work perfectly for that. And like you just go on top of all of it, I guess. So I'm gonna like start on the outer areas. I'm definitely gonna have to take this down my neck, so don't judge me for this. But I'm gonna start by stippling that all over. Like on top of the bronzer, on top of everything, this is gonna be the layer that goes on top of it all to blend it all together. It feels so wrong. It feels so wrong to be blending this on top of everything, but I get it. I get the principle. Perhaps I needed a bigger brush. Whatever, we'll make it work. And putting the foundation on top basically just makes it so everything is diffused and seamless. You don't really see a line in which the bronzer begins, the bronzer ends. There's no harsh lines. Everything's just all melted together and you're like, is that the natural skin? At least that's the effect of like the Mary Phillips underpainting, in my opinion. I'm gonna switch back to the It Cosmetics brush. I just feel like I'm getting a little bit better of a surface area with this. <laughs> And then I'm just gonna keep the same brush because I kind of switched up a little bit, but then we go into the lighter shade of the foundation 
and apply that on the inner parts of the face, which again, just seems like a very scary, <laughs> I, don't know why, I don't know why it feels so wrong to be applying this all on top, but again, it makes sense. Also, this brush is quite a delight, quite a delight for this. We'll use again. Now she doesn't explicitly state when this was blended out, but at some point in this process, this little concealer line was blended out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the full inner bits of the face and the forehead, and then I will do this little concealer blending last. And then just go back with the small little eyeshadow brush that we used way earlier on and just kind of do that on top. And then I'll switch to the, you know, the It Cosmetics brush and just boop, boop, boop. And that concealer line just gives the most subtle little highlighting effect. So perhaps again, for those of us who really struggle with nose contour, this could be the thing that we do. It helps all the layers really stand out on their own. So once you're happy with how that is all blended in, I'm actually really, really thrilled at how this is looking so far. Now we go into cream blush and she actually used the Patrick Ta She's Blushing palette, which has a cream and a powder. She used both. Listen, I'm really like torn because I have seen the videos of Patrick Ta using that exact duo on Alex Earl, all over TikTok. It looks so good. I might have to pick it up. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts if you've tried it. But I thought for the time being, we could use some of the shades that we already have to achieve a similar look and effect. So I'm gonna use Nude Sticks Nude Buff and she applied this on with a brush. This is my Refer 04 brush, my beloved. And we're really gonna hug the apples of the cheeks here and blend that up. I love how high she takes this into the eye, which is something that I have been loving doing lately. Just really shaping out the apple of the cheek. And then you can kind of see her go between the blush brush and the little concealer brush and just kind of pat it together just to make sure that it's very, very seamless. I feel like you could also do the cream blush underneath the foundation too, if you wanted to try that. But I also do love a bit more of a pop when it comes to my blush color. So I'm happy to put this on top. And once your cream blush is applied, now we're gonna do all of our powders, which is essentially all of the same things that we did in cream in powder format, starting with your setting powder. Was very thrilled to see that she was using a loose powder and a triangle puffy puff. <laughs> Love that, gonna do the same, dipping it into my Givenchy loose powder, making sure that we pat out any creases that we've got and we're gonna use this to set the under eyes. And she actually like applied quite a bit, kind of in a baking style, which she wiped away after the fact. So I'm just gonna put this here and the pink shade of this one, number three in particular, will aid and add in the brightening effect. God so much. Um, I am just gonna put a little bit of excess just woo -woo 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 right here. If we were following the Kevin Kodra method, I believe he would take a little bit of powder down the nose too, just to further set that. So you can do that too, if you wanna follow that concealer line. And that'll just subtly continue the brightening of the nose too. I'm grabbing a fresh blush brush and then going in with our powder blush. I wanted to use the Laura Mercier All That Sparkles. I thought this kind of complemented the nude buff blush very well. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this. She just does a lovely little layer of that on top. And that kind of acts like the diffusing component between our under eye powder that we've now applied and the blush. And this one's got a really nice glow in it too. So I don't really feel like I need to go in with highlighter. We've got all the highlight we need. I'm gonna take a clean brush and just blend that powder away from the under eye and just boop, touch the nose too and wipe that powder away. Priscilla's skin still looked like her skin. And for a final layer, we're gonna use some lovely little glowing bronzer. This is the Benefit Hula Glow Bronzer. I'm gonna take that on a fluffier brush and just go ahead and really lightly dust that all over the areas where we applied the deeper contour and bronzers. Now she didn't necessarily mention this, but of course I'm gonna finish off the makeup with my setting spray. I waited until the end to set my brows, so I'm gonna go ahead and set those in. Let's do a little bit of lip liner, a bit of Chanel Boy on the center, and I'll finish off the eyes with a bit of mascara. And this is the finished makeup look. Listen, you guys know how much I love to make a dramatic statement, but I actually think that this is some of the best makeup that I've ever put on my face. It feels like it's so soft and diffused. And as someone who really likes to do a heavy contour and heavy blush, I often find that that can be very <laughs> liney on me and what a beautiful way to just make everything look so natural on the skin. This is gorgeous. I'd say that the biggest takeaway for me is that the brushes are necessary. Like we used a lot of brushes to complete this look, but I do think that it was necessary, especially like jumping in between like the larger and the more precise brushes and having a clean brush to kind of buff everything away. The brushes were a huge, huge key to this. You could use so many different products to achieve the same look, but the brushes was pretty like key. 
for this makeup look. I am so curious to hear what you guys think. Have you tried the underpainting technique? And I just wanna say thank you so much to Melissa Herkman for making the most beautiful breakdown video of this that we can follow to achieve this look. I think it's just like, wow, it's so soft. I am obsessed and I'm absolutely gonna do this again. I'm literally gonna save this video in my phone and do this every day. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this makeup. Let me know what you think about the underpainting technique. All the products I use in the video, I will list in the description box down below, as well as where you can find Melissa Herkman if you too want to watch her beautiful breakdown video. Thank you so much for being here and for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for a new video. Bye.